Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth week of our course. So this is the week when we are going to switch back to uh, talk about something that is related to content but is not exactly the content for our circles. And we are going to talk about our math values. What is it that we value in the circles, why we're doing it, how is it important to us, and, and how to uh, make sure that the values that are important to us are conveyed through the activities we choose in the circles. So I'm going to ask Maria a few questions, and these are very tough questions because uh, these are actually the questions that at some point they will come up, and at some point you might have uncomfortable moments with the participants, with the parents, or with yourself. Um, but these questions are best addressed before you start your circles. So let's talk about math values. Maria, my first question for you is, of course, what are your values? How did you discover them? And how do you address them in your circles? Hello. Well, uh, it, as you said, it's hard to talk about values because uh, these are deep and private and as you said, how do you discover them? Sometimes you don't know until something comes up. So, um, I usually discover values, I love this phrase by Martin Luther King, creative maladjustment. I usually discover values when something goes wrong and <laughs> something goes against them and then, then you know, well, uh, what was that about? Well, oh, there was a value that got uh, uh, violated, I guess. <laughs> but um, you, uh, in general, in circles, it's uh, I find it's better to work by practices. What is it we do? But you know why we do it. That's the value. So for me, uh, one of the biggest value is, um, I, I would say, freedom, decision-making, agency, autonomy of individual people. So I try not to tell people what to do. It's for them to decide. And I try... Uh, not to take away their um, autonomy, at the same time to, to have support. So that dictates the practices we do. For example, the problems are open to interpretations. Uh, the um, people are never forced to come to the circle um, and uh, then it comes in small practices and big practices. Um, my uh, my big mathematical value, I, I view mathematics, this is a philosophical value, I view mathematics as a human endeavor, uh, as being created. So it's an endeavor of creating mathematics that we are doing. Uh, so um, mathematics uh, is uh, I mean, it evolves a little bit, but mostly it's intelligent design that makes it, hopefully, and it's us who, who make it. So that value gets interpreted in me always inviting people to make things. If I um, show people multiplication, I invite them to show me their operations that they make up. Or maybe they found, or maybe they like. If I... Uh, demonstrate a function machine, then people build theirs and create and demonstrate theirs. Everybody takes turns creating mathematics. So these are two big things for me. Uh, the uh, freedom to to do what what is meaningful for you and uh, mathematics as a mm, as a creative endeavor. Mathematics is something people made. All right. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned the freedom. Uh, the way what matters to me a lot is that children have an opportunity to engage in problem solving uh, activities themselves. Not just their own choice to do it or not to do it, but they have a chance to find 
their own answers, and so that too leads to open-ended problems um, for me. Um, so my next question for you is, and this happens a lot, what if the children that you work with have different values? They value different things than you do. Uh, for me, it's um, I prefer and I value cooperative aspect of math circles. However, I do have children that are highly competitive, and that's what they value. And same, especially for parents, uh, their values are a lot more established and developed. Um, so, what if you have parents in your circles with very different values from your own? Well, um, I, I think the big thing here is to separate several categories. There are some things that I want back away from. There are some aspects of these values, so I guess expressions, that uh, no matter what happens, it would not be acceptable to me for anyone to break. So, for example, it's not negotiable that everyone in the circle is there by desire. I mean, we all are sometimes tired, and uh, sometimes the first time it's not clear uh, if parents brought the kids or if kids brought the parents, and some people may be checking it out and not know yet themselves if they want to be here. But if I see a kid who doesn't want to be there and parents make the kid, that's not acceptable and uh, not negotiable. That breaks the value of uh, autonomy. Um, so the same thing with making their own mathematics. Um, we you, the, the, take that away, they won't be my circle. Uh, so um, we, we can't not do that. Uh, we, uh, so there are other things that people may value that may be compatible in some forms. So, for example, um, for example, cooperation and competition. Again, I prefer cooperative activities, but competition doesn't violate my values, the, the core ones. So it may be compatible in some forms, unless it takes the form of taking away people's freedom, then it won't happen. Uh, so uh, this takes us back to uh, the governance of circles. Now, um, there are several ways you can Basically, the question is how are decisions made when there are conflicts? How are uh, just day-to-day uh, -day decisions made, but also how are conflicts resolved? So uh, I like uh, benevolent dictatorship as my decision-making model. So uh, I basically say here are a few rules and I will enforce them 100% of time. Uh, whoever doesn't like them is welcome not to come. And whoever accepts them is welcome to do everything else, whatever they want, unless something comes up and then I can deal with it again. Um, now, of course, I listen to everyone in there. Um, now, some circles run on direct uh, consensus where everyone involved uh, consents to everything that happens, so people negotiate values much more in such situations. And uh, there are consensual decision-making government governance. Uh, some circles are anarchic, basically. So it, it usually happens in very open environments where people come together and play in a space. So the only rules they have is avoidance of bodily harm, basically. So anything else, people play as they would, uh, do what they want. Uh, different parents may, have, may do different things and so on. And everything in between. Cooperatives usually uh, have some, negotiate some rules and some values. Um, I uh, I haven't had um, issues um, 
the the issue that came up with me was about the freedom. It's parents who want to make their kids to be there and kids don't want to. And basically I take them aside and ask, uh, this conversation always goes by the script. I say, you know, I noticed that your kid doesn't want to be here. And they say, well, if I let my kid decide, we would never do anything. And then I say, well, um, uh, you resolve this issue on your end and when you get it resolved, come back to me because we can't work on it within my math circle. And that's it and usually uh, that, that's, uh, that's it. So um, we basically, um, but, but most of the time, uh, most of the time it's, uh, if you just have a few values and they are core, you, need, you um, explain them very clearly at the beginning and then people don't come if they're not compatible. And speaking of uh, people don't come if they're not compatible, and this is something uh, we discussed several times uh, with you privately. So a situation that I have, um, that I shared with Maria some time ago, was that uh, one of the parents, the values of that parent, were very, very different uh, and, and incompatible with the values of my, um, my group. So at some point there was so much interference with how I saw things had to be run and with, uh, with my views that I really felt that having a family in the group was uh, detrimental to the dynamics of the group that were already established. At the same time, I felt that, well, the, the parents would not change. They were very entrenched in their values and I didn't want to change mine and they were not compatible for any kind of compromise um, to be reached. They were completely opposite. Um, so the question for me was how to deal with that situation, whether I should continue inviting that child to the group. Um, and I asked the advice and my I was torn between I really should not invite that family into the group and thinking, oh, but it's not fair to this child. Maria, can you, uh, can, can you talk about this? Well, f uh, first of all, um, we are not in the business of providing the basics of life, food, shelter, and so on. Uh, now, if we were, we couldn't turn away people at all because we would guarantee that we provide it to everyone. Uh, since we are providing elective services, uh, I feel it's uh, okay uh, to not provide them to everyone in the world. Uh, there are different educational services and there are different circles for everyone and different people can start their own circles with different values. So the help here is, well, you would be happier elsewhere and uh, that's, that's where you go. Um, so there is abundance of we, we should think there is abundance of mathematics everywhere. If there is not, we should work to work ab toward abundance, uh, abundance toward lots of different opportunities rather than fitting everyone into something that doesn't fit them. Um, at the same time, uh, the question of fairness is you are building something for a group of people. A again, the goal is to clearly communicate what it is you are building. So if you are building a cooperative endeavor, this one kid who wants to compete will destroy what you are building for everyone, not just uh, for, for you, but for other kids, for other parents. So all these people, if they came to cooperate, to have a cooperative friendly experience, whoever breaks that, um, that's not fair for everyone else. Uh, so. Um, I, I mean, imagine people coming to a, a Chinese restaurant demanding a burger. Well, how um, how is it fair to all the diners there 
who came to have a Chinese experience if the restaurant has to rebuild now for burgers. Maybe they should step to another establishment. So, um, so that's that's basically my take on it. You are building something in a particular style when it comes down to it with particular values. You do not promise to serve everyone in the world. In fact, it's a service to explain to people where they would be happier, where they would find more compatible experiences, or maybe even help them establish their own. Now, this way, you are not sending, sending people out into the cold. You are um, helping people uh, do the, their thing. It, it, exercise their agency in appropriate ways maybe away from you but still you can uh, you can be colleagues this way all right um, and that uh, brings me to the last question that I have for you is how to communicate the, your values the values of the circle that you're leading to other participants. Now with children in my circle and in the other groups, it's we do a two-step process. One is I, I have very few rules. I usually have two rules uh, and they stem straight from the values um, of children working by themselves without uh, adults telling them exactly what to do and how to do it. Um, and the second one is um, the cooperation. So, because um, they're already very competitive, uh, many kids in my groups, and I, I want them to discover uh, the cooperative nature of mathematics or any other activities. So my two rules are based on those two values. And with children, it's, uh, it's fairly easy. I just tell them the rules, and then I ask them uh, what would be their rules for uh, for the meetings. And we do a little brainstorm. Um, with parents, it's a bit more difficult. I try to explain the rules at the beginning of the, the meetings, well, once, and I think that's not enough. I think there has to be more education and I should probably do a better job at explaining why I have those rules and why they matter. How do you do it um, with your circles? Um, I I agree, and I'm it's something I'm working on uh, actually right now. So I'm seeking better practices. I hope to learn from people in this course and from other circle leaders. I think individual meetings with parents ahead of time is a way to go. And I found in general that when we talked with parents, when we discussed dreams, worries, hopes, theirs and mine, uh, things work much better later. So I tr I'm trying to have individual meetings with everyone before we start the circle. And also, um, I think turning values into practices and practical rules, as you said, helps a lot. So, for example, uh, when we, uh, I mean, if I say freedom, that's too abstract, really, way too abstract. That means different things to different people. It's not something you can enforce or check for. I mean, how do you check if there is freedom? But uh, what I, what I can say particular things. For example, all our problems will be open to interpretation. Uh, children will find their own ways to solve things and uh, children should come if they want to and not come if they don't want to. That's something that's it's a practice, it's something you can check and it's something you can discuss. So the key here I think is turn general principle into particular practices and then discuss those and even better demonstrate. I'm thinking of uh, when I next run a circle, I will probably run a circle for parents ahead of time and will do some of the activities with just the parents and uh, that will give me the opportunity to, to, to show them 
not to tell them, but to show them how we do things. This is what we do, this is what we don't do uh, with using the particular activities. So um, I'm. Uh, this is a hard one, we're all working on it, but I love involving parents into circles. We usually become friends or we keep, keep in touch later because parents are a great resource for, for circles. That's what circles run on either during the circles or behind the scenes. And so uh, this is very important for me that we communicate always. And another simple thing is after a circle, just very quickly get parents together and say, did you notice anything interesting? Do you have any questions? And a lot of times parents would ask, why did you do that? Or what happened there? They are curious and don't understand why. So a lot of parents ask me, for example, why I don't immediately correct wrong answers, which I don't usually. So, and I don't because I'm very curious to investigate what the child was thinking. And more often than not, children actually lead to very interesting places. The answer may be wrong to, to small thing, but it, on the bigger scale, it's interesting. So this discussion, a lot of parents say that was helpful for them to, to, ha to have had this little conversation after the circle. So uh, I guess just talk more with everyone. And with kids, um, we talk, uh, well, try not to talk during the circle, but sometimes afterwards, uh, especially if they had some Sometimes, very rarely, but especially with younger kids, there is a little strife. Someone writes on someone someone's paper where they didn't want to, or uh, someone calls someone a name they didn't like. Things of that nature with five-year-olds happen sometimes, uh, maybe uh, once every few meetings. So we sometimes have a little circle discussion of that as well. What What's happening? What, what are we going to do next time? So just talk with people, that's all, all it gets down to. All right, this brings us to the end of this week's interview with Maria and uh, getting her share her tips and her wisdom with us. Uh, but it seems to me that one of the really good things to do before you even start your circle is to think about your values. What uh, and, and then look at the activities. You probably at this point already have some ideas about activities that you would like to try at your math circle. After all, week three, uh, you spend some time searching for your signature activity. Um, so you probably have a small collection of things you would like to try. Now, once you identify your values uh, and you write them down, look at the activities that you've selected and think about whether these the values that you identify are compatible with the activities that you selected, with, especially with the style, because the activity in itself can be adapted um, to to be different. Um, you can even open it up like a closed activity. You can open it up. You can make a very competitive thing less competitive, or you can make a non-competitive thing very competitive. Uh, you can adjust it so it's uh, very inclusive um, to all the ages and the skills, or you can um, focus it. So actually, it uh, it would be uh, more focused would probably exclude something. So look at what you selected. Look at other things that you've come across, and think about uh, one how uh, this activity uh, works with your values and two, if it doesn't seem to work very well, can it be changed to work better for you? And we'll see you in the forums and we'll see you next week. Have fun!